This is part three of the Blender game engine tutorial for new beginning Blender users. So the first couple of lessons we covered moving this object around and bouncing it into this object and right towards the end we had some issues with the way it was kind of bouncing against the wall and sneaking through the plane. In fact if I press P you notice how that went through there? Well that does, let me press Z to go in the wireframe and that does come back to this radius button. It always does. This will, this can either be your best friend or it can come and haunt you. So let's raise this radius back up and maybe get, make it a little bit wider like this and I'll go Alt Z twice to get back in here and I'll press P and then notice it doesn't go through quite as much. Alright let's do this a little bit more. Let's make it up to that. You can't see it in this mode so you have to go into Z. Now I made it bigger and I'll come back into texture mode and notice that now it's sitting right on top of the plane so it's a little bit closer but what happens if we move this thing here oh that seems to be that seems to be a bit a little bit better except look at that it absorbs right into that thing so we really don't want that to happen but that's the way sometimes it works okay we can fix that easy enough so that radius this radius here is really a huge issue as far as getting simulations right. A lot of times the best way to deal with it is I'll just get rid of this in the scene real quick and I'll I'll put a new sphere in the scene. I'll give it a color. And I'll show you one thing. Now notice um, we had to make it dynamic like that. That makes it an actor by default and if I go in the wireframe mode, notice you don't see that radius. It's set at 1. Basically the same as here. It's Well, that would really be... Um, but now watch happens if I just press S and I scale it down. See, I'm scaling it down and that radius doesn't follow. So I'm going to press Escape. Now if I go into edit mode, however, and I press S and I scale it down, it still doesn't follow. Well, come on. Are you kidding me? I'm telling you, it can be a nightmare sometimes, those guys. That is usually solve it right there, so not always. So, let's... Ah, uh, yeah. Can you believe that? No. Oh, so we're just going to scale it down. We're going to scale it down. And we're going to scale this down to match it. Let me see. Let me get in close. Sometimes it helps. Like that. See, uh, it looks a little bit small now. Yeah, but I'm going to want this guy even smaller in this scene. Where is it? Let me move him over here. Yikes. Oop, nope, not there. I'm going to move it back into the scene like this. Even moving things actually can uh, change some of the physics effects and really goof you up. But let me zoom in close and try it here. Try and get it. I want it close. I want it just about there. You know, so it's a... This one's a tough one to deal with. Alright, let me press P and see what happens. Nope, too much. I want it not to go through so far. Press P, nope. It's almost like it wants it all the way out there at the edge. Huh. Yeah, okay, well this is a good lesson. Because <laughs> believe me, this is this is probably one of the biggest challenges within the game engine is doing that but that seems to work pretty well anyway alright so I assure you you will be working with that kind of stuff a lot if you're gonna work in the game engine alright so it bounces off and then you can adjust all these guys down here to you know you can change the mass and things and you know that'll help in the scene so uh, that's for starters. So one other thing we're going to do now is that, well that's kind of boring really in a lot of ways. So let's change this as well just for some practice. We'll click this one. We'll come back up here to game logic mode and we'll go with mouse here press up arrow and I'm going to also move this up and down. So I'm going to add just like before I'm going to add a keyboard center and another keyboard center. This time I'm going to press the up arrow key. This time the down arrow key. I'm going to add two AND controllers. I'm going to connect them together. And then I'm going to go a couple, get a couple more motion actuators. And I'm going to connect those together. And then this time I want to just, that was on the uh, 
since we're looking at the x-axis left and right, I want to rotate it on the x-axis. So up, I'm going to rotate by, let me see if I get this right, negative, that's going to be, I'm not sure which way that's going to go, so I'm just going to say negative 0.2, and down here I'm going to say 0.2 in the x-axis. All right, control up arrow, and then instead of using this menu to go back to default, you can use the arrow keys, control left and right arrow. So control left arrow brings me back, control right arrow takes me there. These are quick and easy ways to get around the system like this. And then uh, when I go into the simulation, now by pressing the up and down arrow key, whoops, did I goof that up or what? I did. All right, hang on. Escape that. I'll go back into control right arrow into here, control up arrow here. Of course, I put it in the wrong location. Press Z, I mean zero. It is zero that out. And it's down here, rotation. Oh, negative 0.2 and 0.2. I think it's been a long day. Okay, control up arrow, control left arrow. And back in this scene, press P. Now, when I press the up arrow key, it tilts it down. Then we have another issue. They see it's bouncing against the edge. And then it tilts it this way. And it bounces it there. So let's move everything oh no let's just get we'll just get rid of this guy real quick get rid of that plane so now we can just see it here now let's press p all right let's move it down here as i was going to show you one thing notice i don't see the side of the plane right here notice it's disappeared and watch now it comes rolling back down here this way so i can zoom out so you can see that a little bit better And there it is, it bounces up against there. But up here, see, you don't see the front of the plane. That's because what I mentioned before, how the polygons aren't rendered on both sides. So there's several ways to do it. You can either do it across the whole game engine, but one of the easiest ways is I'm just going to click this object here, and I'm going to press Shift D, and then without moving my mouse, I'm going to left click. So now I have two copies. And you can see this is plane.003. If I right click it again, it's plane.002. So I'm going to get plane.003 like this. And now I do want the normals the other direction. So I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to highlight them all with A. Go up to here. And I'm going to flip the normals back to how it normally would be. I'll go back out of edit mode. And then since, you know, now I'm seeing both. But what I want to do is I'm going to click that. Shift and click. So now I have them both selected. And I'm going to join them to get together control J so now I've joined them together and now this is one way to deal with it it's not always the ideal way but it's one way just for the starter so if I press P there you see the front plane of it as well I it's oh and actually you can see where it's trying to come through so it's rolling down there and then I can as it's rolling I can bounce it out of the way all right and it's rolling See if you bounce off of that. Oh, missed it. Obviously, we could make it a little bit faster. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> All right. Well, that should give you some pretty good ideas as to how to work with the game engine. And you can start by just experimenting a lot right now. And that will really help. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson. And I'll see you in the next lesson.